we kind of took what Sturgeon City already has um, set up with all the marine biology, oceanography stuff, and then we added some human sciences and some animal sciences like livestock. In the class we've done a lot of what really happens on the inside of bodies and how chickens develop in the egg and what's in an egg. Um, we've talked about organ systems. We made a model of a brain today. We made models of the skeleton yesterday. So it's like in the classroom and then out here we've done, we went out on the canoe, collected trash, we um, did fin fish assessment. So they took nets up on the shore and out in the, uh, out in the bay of fish and what different types of organisms are out there and close to shore. And then right now behind us they're doing benthic sampling, which is they, they get a whole bunch of mud and then they sift through it to see what type of small microorganisms they can find. Today we are digging through the mud to find benthic organisms and benthic is like bottom feeder or bottom organisms. Uh, you had to use the box shoveler which is a mechanical device that scoops it from the bottom and they usually take five gallons of that and sift through it. You have to put it in your hand and sift through it and to see if you find any organisms. Our set of students here, they're very passionate and they come here because they want to. Um, and there's a much smaller class size, so we can go and do more um, with our students than say in a classroom where we have 30 kids and it's not as easy to go on a field trip than here. We've been here for three days straight, you know, we could go wherever we wanted to. It's very um, open to learning experiences. Like school, you're more sitting down and textbook stuff but like here they're like connecting science and life together and we're very diverse students like meeting new people especially and um, just like working together it's a lot of fun and it's all hands-on Today our students are getting a taste of crime scene investigations. So um, Officer Wagner was nice enough to brief them on the importance of preserving evidence and the importance of not tampering with evidence along with how do we document it, how we photograph it, and the last part would be how do we collect it. Because once we collect and once we leave that crime scene, we can't bring it back. So the more information that we gather, and make sure that that crime scene is processed completely before we leave the scene, the better it is for us when we um, investigate the crime. If you get hot, then you must get cool. Bad boys, bad boys. Well, they're realizing that math, science, um, plays a, a big factor in um, processing and collecting evidence. They're also understanding that, of course, the communication, English, grammar, um, writing, because the backbone of police work is documentation. As a school resource officer, we also teach classes at school, uh, but here we're, we're here with them for a week. Uh, earlier this week, we did a, a police officer's physical fitness test. We actually run them from when they were, uh, if they were to come in and go to police academy, what we would do is, a, uh, as far as physical fitness tests, what we would do at police academy, then we're now getting into what we would actually do as a police officer how we uh, would respond to a crime scene, uh, what we would do at a traffic accident, some of the tools like that. We've got an uh, accident scene set up, uh, and they're now going to come out and investigate, use the tools they, they received in class, now they're going to come out and investigate this crash scene. Open your door and step out of the vehicle. We learned like how to approach a car in, in the classroom part. We learned how to approach a car and, and to be safe and not come up like because he might have a gun or something. We learned how to be safe. I've learned over the years that a lot of people fear the police more than they should respect them. And I think that it's a really good idea to learn about how who really protects us at, in our own country.
My name is Bernie Rossage and I'm an artist instructor and I'm working with the Art Institute at Sturgeon City and I got a fine bunch of kids out here today. I shouldn't say kids, they're high school students. I chose the Art Institute because um, it's something that I really enjoy, it's something that I like doing in my spare time um, and it's really fun, you get to meet a lot of people, you get to go outdoors. Right now we are a uh, plein air painting which is like uh, painting outdoors, painting what you see. Um, so right now we're painting the Freedom Fountain outside of City Hall. Artists of old have always gone outside when they could, when the invention of the paint tube was available, and went outside to paint. And what they did is they would use these paintings for their sketches, because we're talking before photography. They didn't have photography as reference. So they would do these plein air sketches, take them back to the studio, and make larger paintings from them. You have to go really fast because the sun uh, changes. He says you have about two hours to uh, finish it. So you really have to almost hurry, but uh, keep your concentration and not go too fast so that you mess up. With this exercise, the main thing they're learning is to work fast because Yesterday we painted in the studio and we painted under direct observation. In other words, we set up a still life with a light on it and everything. So they got those direct observation skills, but the light wasn't moving. Today, they're doing direct observation skills, but you know, there's a whole different thing with plein air painting. Cars are going by beeping at them. Uh, the wind's blowing. The fountain's even cut off a couple of times. But the main thing is, the lights moving so they're having you know they're, you have to learn to work fast and you have to learn to edit a scene so I, right now I'm having them all we're painting a similar scene where we're zooming in on the uh, fountain a little bit because a lot of times when you come outside to paint plein air you've got all this around you and it can be overwhelming so it's teaching them editing skills it's definitely difficult because the fountain's always moving like you can't just have one still frame where you can get like every little detail you have to get the general uh, look of the fountain, um, not just like one little frame because there's no way you can remember that frame when you're painting the whole thing. That will be the lighter side, so I just threw a little bit of white in there just to lighten it up so it would be a little bit different than the, the solid red. It's like they're wet cement in my hands and they, I can mold them without stifling their creativity. I don't want them to be a bunch of Bernie Rossages. Yesterday I got to see their still life, I got to see their personality come out in each one. Um, but, you know, art is beyond just all creativity. There is some science involved. In other words, you have to know techniques, you have to know how to mix these colors and stuff to express yourself really well on canvas. I'm trying to teach them those things that it's not just uh, all fun, there, there's some work involved to it. And uh, they've been stepping up to the challenge pretty good. I've been pretty pleased with a great bunch. We are using a robotics platform called VEX, which is something that's used in a lot of international competitions um, to basically show the students how robots work. The first two days we built a robot based off instructions we had gotten off the internet. And then from then we decided to build a robot that would climb stairs based off our own thinking and creativity. So we didn't have instructions to build the robot, we had to come up with it ourselves. <laughs> Um, the robots that we're using are not autonomous. They're actually being controlled by handheld receivers that are very much like the video game receivers. Using those controllers, we teach the kids how to operate the servos, how to make the motors work. When we figured out what we wanted their robots to do, we would code them so that the controllers would operate two motors at the same time in opposite directions and things like that. But really what we concentrated on was how the robots came together. We looked, talked a lot about center of balance and um, how to, and about leverage, and about just in general how to make something do what you want it to do with nuts, bolts, screws, and wheels. I kind of thought about having something that would push the robot up, and I thought at first that we would have something that came out of the robot from the bottom, but then when I joined with Mr. Smith, he had an idea that was similar to mine, but would just keep it on the ground and lift it up and as long as we had the right motors, it would be strong enough to lift it up without it like falling and flipping over. The coolest thing about you know Sturgeon City and working in this type of program is that it's a 100% lab time. You know, 
Engineering's fun, but when you're teaching it in school and in class, half of it's math. At Sturgeon City, it's all lab time, so we're always building, always putting stuff together. It's a lot of fun being here. Mr. Smith's a great instructor. He makes it fun. So even if you're stressed out over this and you just can't make it work, he'll calm you down and make you realize, hey, just start over. It helps your engineering abilities because you get to see how you can build something that actually works. As soon as you start hearing the little whir of the motors, you know, and the kids are like, wow, it works. You know, I mean, that's what you're kind of going for as a teacher in general, you know, and especially in engineering is that wow it works moment. Wow, I, I did that, you know, wow, I succeeded. And when you get one little success after another in a program like this, you know these kids are gonna go back to their schools and they're gonna say, I wanna take an engineering class. That was really fun working with those robots. I wanna see what that's like. I wanna go to the next level.